Hey everybody, welcome to uh, CS135 Assignment 4. And we're going to be doing this airport uh, kiosk program. So I guess the motivation behind this program is suppose you need to take an emergency vacation. Maybe the semester is a little stressful, so taking a vacation will be a way to help you de-stress. But of course, the issue is at airports, you always have to book the flight well in advance. Or actually, you don't really book the flight at the airport, but you probably go online to book a flight. And you have to book the flight typically in advance or else you will not be able to get an airplane. And of course, you have to book the hotel even further in advance. because That's always the second complicated or most expensive part of your trip is the hotel. So... Luckily, I guess at the airport itself, there's a new machine there, which will be this kiosk machine, this hypothetical machine that will help you book a flight um, quickly. So that's going to be the motivation behind this. And the, I guess the uh, learning outcomes would be uh, to learn uh, loop structures or petition in C++ to implement this uh, menu driven program and to be able to reprompt Whenever the input is uh, not well uh, written or not well formatted input, we have to reprompt the user. So let's go ahead and now talk about the contents of main. And then I'm going to do a sample run of the program to help you uh, visualize, help you see how the uh, main has to uh, work. Let's go ahead and check this out. Okay, so this is going to be um, sort of the uh, main algorithm written right here for you. So I have this nicely... Um, sort of set up for you step by step. And of course, you have to take this uh, writing and be able to convert it into C++ code. So let's go ahead and sort of start from the beginning. So the very beginning part, you're going to have sort of three type of um, airplane seats. Of course, you have either first class, business class, or economy class. And each one has a cost. So first class, the price per seat is $750. Business class is $225 and the economy class is 150. So I would just suggest maybe store these three values into, um, into constants because of course you want to make your code uh, maintainable. So use a constant to store those three values. Okay, so now for the first step, you want to declare three variables because you want to have three variables that holds how many um, seats of, so how many first class seats are available how many business class seats are available, and how many economy seats are available. So you want to have three variables that stores the available seats of each type of seat on this airplane. And initially, you're going to set 15 to your first class, 25 is going to be set initially to business class, and then 50 will be set to economy class. So you have 15 first class seats initially, 25 business, and 50 economy. Now, of course, you can have more variables you can declare in your program as needed, but you want to at least have these variables because you want to, of course, always track how many seats are available of each type of um, seat on this airplane. Okay, so now step two, which is going to be really the first step of your main algorithm, you have to prompt the user for input. So you want to prompt them to enter either F for first class, B for business, and E for economy class. Now, the input has to be case insensitive, as in if they enter a capital F or a lowercase f, it has to be interpreted as first class. And the same thing, it could be a capital or lowercase b, and then of course for economy, it would be capital lowercase e. Now, um, in the very first step, this won't come up, but as you're selling tickets, um, at some point, you might run out of tickets for first, for business, or economy class. So you only want to output, you only want to prompt the user for first class if there are first class seats available. And then same thing, you only want to output the user um, B for business. You want to, you know, you only want to output that only if there are business seats available. So I show the example run, I'll make that more clear. So you only want to output, um, you only want to prompt the user the type of seats that are still available on the airplane. But of course, I will show an example where you can see that. So in step three, after you enter either F, B, or E, enter a character, if the character in step two was not F, B, or E, or the ticket type that was read in is no longer available, you want to go back to step two and reprompt. So for example, if you enter the character X, go back to step two. So you can see that step two and three is going to be, 
or step three is going to be a loop of some kind. You can see there's a little inner loop you're going to have right there. So the idea is that, let's say, for example, uh, there are no first class seats available, but the user enters F anyway. Then the problem is F first class is a valid seat type, but if there are no seats available of that type. You want to reprompt and go back to step two. So there's two conditions. Either it's not a valid seat type or that C type is valid, but there's no more tickets of that type available. So if you have any of those situations, go back to step two. Otherwise, continue to the next step. Step four, well, you want to prompt the user for a ticket amount. And then step five, you want to check to make sure it's a valid amount. So if the amount read is not a valid number, let's say typed in hello world, or the amount is negative, or the amount is larger than the amount of tickets available of this C type. So for example, if I enter F for first class, and then I enter 20 tickets, there aren't 20 tickets available. They want to go back to step four. So if the amount is valid, and it's not a negative, and the amount is actually less than the available, less or equal to, then go to the next step. So the input was valid. So you can see again, you have sort of um, step two is sort of its own inner loop, but two and three right there. Well, actually, you know, three is its inner loop right there, three. And then you have four and five is the inner loop as well. Now on step six, if the amount was valid, you want to subtract that amount away. So let's say, for example, the user buys five first class tickets, you want to remove five from the first class variable amount. And then you want to compute the cost, which will be five times 750, multiply it or, or multiply it by it's 1.085, multiply it by the tax amount. You want to add tax as well to this. So 8.5% will be the tax right now. Of course, that could you know change, but I guess right now I'll, I'll just say it's 8.5% is the tax amount at the moment. So of course, when output the transaction cost with tax, when I'll put that to the screen, after you output that, Step seven, you ask the user if they want to shut down. They want to end this program. So shut down this kiosk, if you will. So of course, the user has to enter Y or N for yes or no, again, case insensitive. So if in step eight, if the user does not enter a Y or an N, then you want to go back to step seven. So you have another sort of loop again right here. You have another inner loop right there. If it's not Y or N, go back and reprompt them. And then if it is a Y or N, go to the next step. If user enters N, so it's not, they don't want to end, they don't want to shut down, then go back all the way to back to step two. So go back to the very beginning. Now, if user enters a Y to end it, they go to step 10, which is going to be just end the program. So you want to escape this loop. Now also, if user enters Y or N, but there are no available seats left for anything. So there's no first class economy or business. Then again, the program has to end. So you don't jump back to the top of step two. So step two, two through nine is one big loop. Step three is the inner loop. Four and five is the inner loop. And of course, seven, eight is also an inner loop. So you have these few inner loops you have, and you have this big mega menu loop around the whole program. So the idea is that on step nine, if the user does want to continue, they don't want to shut down, but there's no available seats, that's too bad. You have you, you can't go back to the very top. So of course, I guess this um, could be fixed up a little bit where if it enter N, where they don't want to shut down and there are available seats left, then of course you, you know, you go back to step two. If they enter Y or they entered and they don't want to shut down, but there are no seats available, then you can't jump back to the top of that loop. So, and of course, the next step is end your program. So you just, you just escape that loop. And of course, there's nothing left to be done except to end the program. I could have a nice, funny message output at the very end, but since we have the code grade output, I don't wanna really um, add too many creative, funny outputs because that could make it, the auto test could mess up for you or you might not include certain outputs and so forth. So anyway, that's the um, explanation for the main algorithm. So now I'm going to go ahead and just do an example run so you can see how the program uh, works. Let's go ahead and show that next. All right, so let's go ahead and just compile this program. So I'm using my uh, Linux terminal here on Windows to um, compile this. So we just type in G++. 
main.cpp, which will compile the program. So, so far, so good. Let's go ahead and now uh, run this. So we use a.out. Okay, so here's the input, or here's a prompt message. So I'm going to tell the user first, business economy, and I, in parentheses, I put, you know, F, B, and E to give the user an idea which one to output, which one to read in, sorry. So right now, each of the um, uh, ticket types are available. So we output first business and economy. So let's go ahead and I'm going to type in, I guess, um, lowercase f for first class. And of course, it's going to recognize it as uh, first class. And I'm going to select the amount. So I'm going to initially maybe enter some bad input just because. So let's put in, of course, our infamous um, hello world. And it reprompts because, well, that's not a valid input. So you can see we're kind of stuck on, um, let's say we're stuck right now on step four and five. We're stuck here. If I enter negative nine, again, reprompts because not a valid um, sort of amount. Now, we know for, um, for business, or sorry, for first class, we have 15 tickets initially. If I enter 16, also will reprompt because there aren't enough. So I could have made more outputs to output invalid input. I could have done that, but for code grade, it's going to be a little bit of, I don't want to have to, you know, have you guys deal with that. So I made the output a bit easier. So code grade will be hopefully a little bit more, a little pleasant on this um, assignment. So let's go ahead. I'm going to enter 10 now. And it's a valid amount or a valid ticket amount. So I bought 10, um, I bought 10 uh, first class tickets and it costs this much money with tax. So here we are. So now I'm gonna go ahead and ask to shut down yes or no. So if I enter, let's say um, R, that's not a valid character. If I enter, let's say um, L, not valid. Okay, I'm gonna enter N that I don't want to shut down. So I, it's gonna jump back to the very top of uh, my loop. And we can see here, once again, it's asking for first business and economy. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and type, let's say I'm going to type in T right now. You can see that, oh, T is not valid, so it reprompted. So it kind of jumped to the very top, essentially. So, okay, fine. Um, you know, if I say enter, let's say Z or Z, again, not valid. Okay, I'll type capital F this time for first class. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and put an amount. So there should be five more seats available. Let's try to enter six and see what happens. And it prompts, it reprompts because, well, there aren't six seats available because there was 15 initially, but I just bought 10 in the last transaction. So there's five more available, so I can't do this. So I'm gonna enter five just to have exactly, now there'll be no more uh, first class available. That's gonna be the uh, cost for five first class tickets. Um, along with uh, tax. So again, the shutdown, I'm going to say, no, I don't want to shut down. So I'm going to enter capital N this time. And you notice, check this out. We don't output the first. We only output business and economy because there is no more first class tickets available. So that's what I meant by you output only if that ticket type is available. So since there are no first class tickets left, we don't output um, F for first in our prompting. So that's what I meant in that hopefully this helps further helps helps clear up um, that step to uh, description. So if I enter F right now, even though F is a valid um, ticket type, it's going to reprompt because there are no more tickets left from first class. So it's not really a valid um, ticket amount. Or not sorry, not a valid ticket type because there are no more first class. Okay, fine. So I'm going to go ahead and just enter E for um, economy class. And then the amount, um, well, you know, again, if I enter a bad input, it has to reprompt. So we're stuck in that inner loop. If I go ahead and I enter, let's say five, the cost would be um, 813. So of course I can hit Y. If I hit Y, it will shut down. But I wanna show you what happens if we're out of tickets completely. So I'm going to, um, Enter and I don't want to shut down just yet. I'm going to go ahead and buy out all the economy class. So E for economy. And I believe I, there are 50 initially and I just bought five. So I'm going to enter 45 right now. I'm going to enter no. If you look, we only have business available because we sold out all the tickets 
from first class and economy. Okay, fine. So I enter E. It's in a reprompt F. Also reprompts because you don't have that type of ticket available. Okay, let's enter B for business. I'll enter 20. I don't want to shut down just yet. And of course, we're not done because I enter, I, I bought 20 business tickets or five tickets available from business. I'm going to enter B, enter five. Now, it's going to ask me, do I want to shut down? Okay, fine. If I enter Y, the program will end. But if I enter N, it will also end because I don't want to shut down. But the problem is there are no more tickets available of any type of first class business or economy. If I enter N, we'll notice that's going to also end the program because it doesn't matter that we don't want to shut down. It's too bad. There's no more tickets left. So there's no choice but to shut down the kiosk. So you can see right there that entering a Y will end will automatically end the program, but entering in N can end the program as well if there are no more tickets um, available. So hopefully this sample um, run gives you an idea of how this program works. You can kind of see how to structure your program. So you're going to have possibly one big do while loop and then several these small while loops within the do while body that's made basically its purpose, those smaller inner while loops are designed just to reprompt on bad input. They had that big do while loop that's going to simulate that entire menu. So that's sort of how the program works. Let's go ahead and do some final remarks. And then, you know, then it's your turn to have fun programming um, using while statements. Let's get to the uh, final remarks next. Okay, so the final remarks is just some specifications. So, you know, use a loop. Don't try to hard code and copy and paste if statements. Use a loop to um, simulate this menu driven program. Of course, use a loop to reprompt. Um, it's up to you if you want to use a while, do while, for. It's up to you. I'm not going to enforce it. Just I would suggest probably um, a do while and a while will be neat, all you're going to need to use. You don't have to use any for, for loops in this because there's not going to be too much counter controlled loops going on. Always comment your code. Documentation is always important to get the good habit of documenting your code. And also, use um, good variable names with meaningful names. Don't just use X, Y, and Z for variables. Maybe in class we use those variable names, but just as a teaching tool. But you want to, of course, use variable names so you can have like first amount for first class ticket amount and um, you know business amount. You want to give good variable names. And of course, create constants whenever you can. It's always good to have constants rather than using literals. It makes your program much more maintainable. Um, so I guess submit to a code grade and I guess, you know, make sure it works on code grade. So the output is not too complicated for this. So it shouldn't be hard to match code grades output. I also have a link uh, for the video in the PDF. Once the you know video is actually going to be up on YouTube, here's a link for the uh, image of the airplane I used earlier. So I guess that's the, um, um, this is the video for the assignment of four. Hopefully this gave you a good idea of how to get started. So I guess take care, happy coding and until next time.